Let there be light. How about that? It actually works. On my first real camping trip with the Minimate, when I went down to Burgio, I cobbled together a small solar system, a controller I already had in stock. Uh, I actually am using a, an old battery from the bike, and uh, this charged up the, the cameras I had, you know, no problem at all. And I was just using a little, um, just a 10 watt panel that I had bought for another project, which I haven't finished yet. And uh, it's picking up a good little trickle charge, even though uh, that morning it was really, really overcast. But over the two days I was there, I kept my batteries all charged up. Uh, and we did have, I did have more sun. But when I got back, I did buy a 50 watt Noma power solar panel. Uh, picked it up at Canadian Tire at half price, couldn't beat that. And uh, here it was set up outside the garage in one of my first tests. Works just fine. And here it is in the field uh, at Loft Mountain Campground in Virginia on the Skyline, uh, Skyline Drive. So to set that up, well, I ended up having to drill a hole in the, in the tub and put in one 12 volt outlet there, which is actually an inlet for me. So that's where the solar panel gets plugged in. And when I'm, uh, when I've got the solar panel on the Minimate, and that only takes a couple minutes to get on and off, I can plug that in. So I'm gonna be charging that battery up the whole time I am riding. As long as there's some sun, I'm getting some power. And on my way down to North Carolina and back, that uh, proved out. It was a, a topped off battery every night. So I built some storage in the, uh, the sides of the Minimate. And, uh, oh, I did put two outlets on the outside opposite from that inlet. So those are for my outside lights. Anyway, here's the kind of mess that is hidden when the... Uh, Everything is stuffed down inside. So my old bike battery fits in that and notice that I've got a disconnect on it. I had that hooked directly to the controller at one point, but um, I discovered that the controller is constantly pulling a little bit of a draw. So if I don't disconnect it when I've got it in storage, then uh, I'm gonna end up with a dead battery. So that's solar controller showing 12.7 right now. Uh, these are some of the LED lights that I did add. And that's a, uh, a remote control for turning lights on and off. So I picked up some uh, strip lights, um, 12 volt, 72 LEDs. Uh, might've been a little overkill in some ways. They come with a, um, uh, a, a, a stick on backing but uh, for my purposes uh, what I've done is on two sets of them I have glued um, some rare earth magnets you may have noticed before that I do like the rare earth magnets now they have a little bit of a tail on them and they've also got a switch in them and I don't want the switch in them anymore because I'm gonna be switching them from a separate place so no use in having two or three switches happening at the same time. Uh, it just makes it, makes it harder to troubleshoot if something doesn't come on. So I did add some, some 18 gauge lamp cord to those so they'd be really good and robust. And that's uh, what I was doing here. Now I didn't have those for the trip down to North Carolina. Uh, for North Carolina I only had a couple of battery operators uh, lights that I also had magnets on them, so they worked quite well in the Minimate. 
Just to note, I uh, used JB Weld to attach the the rare earth magnets to the to two of these lamps, and there's a third one that I wired up, but that one I only um, uh, well I haven't put anything on it yet, but I'm going to put Velcro on that one, and I'll put Velcro on the underside of the awning so I can use that for out in the outer room and for cooking and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, so I've modified three of these strips so far and uh, put a little heavier wire on a couple of them and they've all got uh, your basic 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter type of plug on them. Don't we all just love packaging? Now most of these parts I ordered from Banggood and uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to put a few, uh, a few uh, leads down in the description of this thing. Uh, most of it's all just basic wiring, no problems at all. Uh, you know, it can be a little finicky if you're not careful. But if you've done any amount of soldering, you can take care of this, no problem at all. Now, I'm not adverse to borrowing any good ideas from anyone. And on someone else's uh, video on their trailer, they had this really neat wireless remote control. So. I went looking and I found on Banggood they had a four channel remote control unit and they were cheap. I think um, they were under five dollars each and uh, if you bought a quantity of three it got down to around 12 bucks. So I picked up three of them. I'm using one for the trailer and it um, it's fun. It works well. Each one comes with uh, two key fobs. So, uh, should be able to, you know, get by without losing one for a few years. But it does mean that I can walk away from the, the tent trailer and turn stuff on when I'm at the bike. Or when I'm going to bed, I can turn the outside lights off and leave just one light on for reading. And then, um, and when I crash, I can just turn that off as well. Oh, those rare earth magnets. Anyway, I also wired up one light with some other LEDs just for the fun of it. And this was a, a small uh, actual oil lamp that I decided I'd rather have as an electrical lamp. So there, we've just got one other light to carry along with us and it's kind of cute. So what the heck, eh? Let there be light. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this part of the project. I've got two interior lights that are going to do me well for for eating or uh, when I'm at the, the laptop. Though it's certainly giving me quite enough light. And I've got two sources for outdoor lights as well. And right now everything's just hooked up kind of temporarily because I'm going to bring that battery inside of course. But what I've done with the wiring, so I don't have to run it every time, it's just attached to the, the poles with uh, Velcro wire loops, or wire ties, with Velcro ties. 
And because they're on the rare earth magnets, I can just pop them off the center pole and attach them to the side. And when that, when I close the tent up, they should be well enough protected. So I've done the same thing with the, the one that's almost over the bed, but in the storage position, it'll be actually over uh, the bed in a way that might work really well as our reading light. And we'll see how they last over the course of the summer, but at least I don't have to move cables a whole bunch of times uh, every time I tear the tent down. So I did a test. I left these on for three and a half hours. Battery started off at the 12.7. It's gone down to 11.9, which uh, in the grand scheme of things is not bad for that amount of time with those lights on. Because normally if I'm out camping, I'll have one or the other on for you know half an hour at a time. And that's it. I did have another light on in the tent, so this is the light with just the LEDs, and they're kind of a cool white, not a very warm light, white, but uh, but they'll do the job just fine, just fine. That's great. I will uh, take the battery in out of the cold and get it charged up now, but uh, I think this should do me for most of the time during the summer. Yep. Of course, the biggest thing I want this for is actually just charging camera batteries because I expect to be in a lot of places without electricity for days and days and days. But it was a good experiment and um, I'm happy it all works. I'm looking forward to actually getting it out in the, in the field and we'll just see how well it does. So thanks for watching. Glad you came along. Subscribe, hit a like button. See you next time.